So we've already seen energy transfers and now we can look specifically at energy transfers in the context of electricity. So the idea is whenever you plug in an appliance in your home into the wall or you might run out of batteries, you're always trying to bring about an energy transfer to transfer that electrical energy to a more useful type of energy. So for example, if your appliance here was a motor, what you're trying to do is create an energy transfer of kinet of electrical energy to kinetic energy. Uh, but if instead, for example, this was a heating element or a kettle, then the energy transfer you're trying to bring about is once again, from the electrical energy from your source to a type of thermal energy. Okay, so those are two examples of energy transfers with domestic appliances. Now, the amount of energy that's actually transferred depends on two different factors, and those are essentially the power rating or the power of the appliance, and we'll get into that in a second, and also how long you switch it on for, so the time switched on for. Okay, so if you have a appliance with a higher power or you keep the appliance on for a longer period of time, then the amount of energy that you transfer is going to be larger. And the amount of energy particularly is linked to this power rating which we talked about and the idea here is that with any domestic appliance if you look somewhere near the bottom usually of the appliance there will be a sticker and on that sticker or label it will give you a power rating so for example 50 watts and the idea is that that gives you the power rating of the appliance and if the power rating is higher so for different appliances you might have one that's 100 watts one that's 50 watts and the 100 watt one will transfer more energy over the same period of time than the 50 watt one so that's what we mean by the power rating of the appliance and every appliance you'd have its own power rating. Okay, so now let's actually look particularly at a circuit. So when we know that if energy is transferred, that means that work is being done. So in a circuit, if you have a circuit like this, and whenever you have a charge flow, you end up with work being done. So we can actually calculate how much work is done or how much energy is transferred in the circuit by using the following equation. So we should know hopefully that energy transferred is equal to the power multiplied by the time. And um, we'll just put some labels on here. And uh, we can put some units on as well. So the energy transferred is going to be in joules. Power usually in what or you can also put joules per second and the time is in seconds so we've seen this equation before hopefully so the other equation that we're kind of interested in which is more specific to electricity is that the energy transferred is equal to the charge flow multiplied by the potential difference and once again we can put some labels on this this is your charge flow and this is your potential difference and we can also put some units so the energy transferred is going to be in joules again the charge flow is going to be in coulombs so if you remember q is coulombs and your potential difference as usual is in volts and so the idea is if you want to work out the amount of energy transferred, then let's take the current over here. So let's put an ammeter into our circuit over here. And let's also fit a voltmeter across our component. And we can take readings of both. And let's say on the ammeter, we read 10 amps. On the voltmeter, we read 30 volts. Now that's not enough information to work out how much energy is transferred. We also know, need to know how long the circuit is switched on for. So let's say the circuit is switched on for a total of 30 seconds. Now we've got everything we need to calculate it. So let's go back to our equation. So we're going to use the power is equal to sorry the energy transferred is equal to the charge flow multiplied by the voltage so to work out how much charge flows through the circuit then we need to remember our equation relating charge flow and current and so we should know that the current is equal to the charge flow divided by the time and so now what we can do is we can do the current multiplied by the time to get the charge flow we know the current is 10 amps we know the time is 30 seconds and so we just do 10 multiplied by 30 over here and this should give us 300 and the units are coulombs because remember our current is in amps but our charge is in coulombs and so now we can just plug into our equation that the energy transferred is equal to the q the charge flow 300 multiplied by the potential difference which we measured as 30 volts over here and so 300 multiplied by 30 should give you a total of 9,000 joules and that's how you would calculate the amount of energy transferred Okay, great. So there you can see that the energy transferred is dependent on the power and the time or dependent on the charge flow and the potential difference. And we can also look at the power and we know our equations for power equals the amount of energy transferred over the time. And so the power really depends on how much energy is transferred given this time. But we can also have the second equation that the power is equal to the current multiplied by the potential difference. And so using these two equations, you can see what factors affect the power of an appliance. It will be the amount of energy transferred over the given time period or it will be the potential difference across the component and the current through the component okay and so if you take a right back to the beginning where we talked about this energy transfer the idea is if you have a higher power rating then you're going to be able to transfer more energy over a given time and what that means is if you have a motor that is a 50 watt motor then it's going to be able to transfer more of this electrical energy to more kinetic energy and so your motor is going to be able to spin faster same for a kettle or a, or a heater if you have a higher power rated kettle or a heater then it's going to be able to transfer more of that electrical energy Energy to a thermal energy and so your kettle is going to get hotter faster okay so hopefully that all makes sense and let's get into some questions now 
And as usual, a couple questions to round things off. So feel free to pause the video and have a go. Okay, welcome back. Hopefully you had a go. Let's go through the questions now. So question one, what's the power rating of a lamp which transfers 4,000 joules of energy over 40 seconds? So you should know that the energy transferred is equal to the power multiplied by the time. So therefore the power is equal to the energy transferred divided by the time taken. So what we can do then is just plug in our numbers. We've got 4,000 joules of energy is transferred divided by the time taken of 40 seconds. And you should get a t an answer of 100 watts okay so that's will be your power rating for question one let's look at question number two then how much energy is transferred over 30 seconds through a 20 ohm resistor during 12 amps of current so first of all we want to work out the power rating so the power we know is going to be equal to i squared multiplied by r and we're going to use i squared r this version of the equation because you've got the current and we've got the resistance and so we can plug that in to work out our power so 20 multiplied by 12 squared put that into your calculator you should get 2800 and 80 watts and we want to work out the energy transferred and so what we do then we can use our equation that the energy transferred equals the power over the time sorry so energy transferred equals the power multiplied by the time and therefore 2880 multiplied by the total of 30 seconds and you should get 86,400 joules of energy being transferred okay so hopefully you got those correct and i'll see you in the next one